I believe we're good to go now. Boom. We yeah, are. All, right. All right. So uh, I'm Nick talking up here in sports. Uh, up here is Jason, uh, writer for Game Changer Sports Network, and Gavin, who is uh, another guy that does uh, live podcasts, talks about sports called uh, Circus Monkey. Uh, make sure you go check out both of their work. Uh, awesome stuff and uh, today we're not blessed with Eric's presence uh, work has uh, got him a little bit busy and holiday stuff so we're not going to be blessed with Eric's presence but um, uh, future weeks coming we're going to have some playoff stuff going on but uh, let me do my plugs real quick and then we'll go ahead and get into uh, talking some football um, if you're in the Everett area, go check out Tabby's Coffee. Tabby's Coffee is located in the Everett Library. If you guys are buying tickets to any event, music, concerts, uh, sporting events, anything like that, go to SeatGeek.com, use promo code GCSN, and get $20 off your purchase. And go check out Game Changer Sports Network, Talk Interference Sports, Circus Monkey, on any platforms that you can find them. We're on Anchor, Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook, and Instagram, and Twitter. All right. A whole bunch of stuff there. All right. Let's get to it. So, what did you guys think about what happened last week during the NFL? What popped out at you the most? Go ahead, Jason. Uh, so, the for most, most part, part, I mean, I, I, in my opinion, I think Lamar Jackson definitely was sealed up the MVP for himself with last week's performance. You got some I know he's a lot of here. Talk with that and him and Russell going back and forth, but okay. you know, he, he leads the lead with and passing touchdowns now. You got to yeah. say that again, man. Your audio went all haywire. Oh, no problem. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, well, uh, did you hear any of that? Or? No. All I heard was is he's leading the league in touchdowns or something like that. Perfect. Perfect. So, so I think, I think Lamar, Lamar actually, actually sealed, sealed up uh, the MVP, MVP for himself okay. last week uh, uh, with his performance. Uh, he now leads the league with in passing touchdowns. He also broke the NFL season single uh, season record with uh, for rushing yards, uh, breaking Mike Vick's record. Um, but with his performance against Cleveland last week, I definitely think that it's it's his to lose, um, and I don't think it's going anywhere. But home with him. How do you feel about that, Gavin? I would actually agree agree with you 100%. I I think he actually locked locked it up up a little little while ago, in my opinion. Just uh, I don't think anybody was going to be able to have enough time to catch him on that. So, and with breaking those records and just the dynamic player he is, no one's going to touch him. No one's going to be able to touch him for a while. Um, And I'm I'm excited for him. You know, and everybody keeps talking about he can keep it up, right? Can he can do this again? Is he going to take too many hits? And I wish people would just focus on the greatness that we're watching right now versus. Can he continue to do it? I don't care if he ever does it again. We're watching one of the greatest quarterback seasons in the history of the game. So I'm enjoying every bit that we're uh, seeing from Lamar. I hope he keeps it up. And uh, I hope he makes a great playoff run. Um, it'll be fun to watch. But, yeah, he's locked, in my opinion, I agree. Locked it up and enjoy what he's doing uh, out there on the football field. All right, so I 100% agree with you guys. I'm not going to dispute that. But can I just play devil's advocate here and, and just, you know, mention how would you rate somebody on an MVP scale with 11 other pro bowlers on the team? So I I, I saw you actually, I think you posted this the other day or you posted it in our chats and stuff like that. And I totally understand where you're coming from because, you know, we we look back at the, you know, the years you can can always argue a guy like Tony Romo was always an MVP because he carried that team with no other pro bowlers around him. And when he was hurt, they, they were horrible, right? So same, same type, type of thing. thing. How, How can you can call Lamar Jackson the MVP when they just about the entire, entire rest of the starting cast in, in some, some fashion, fashion offense and defense is there as well? The, the only thing, thing is, is, is the, the question becomes: Is he making them better, or is he making or they making him better? better right? right? And, and that, that that's, that's the real question. question. It, it's hard to answer that. Right. I think he makes them better, and in turn, they make him better yet again because the way he's progressing. It's, it's hard, hard to argue with the first game against, you know, Miami, Miami and all that. that. But from then, he hasn't had a letdown since. Right? I mean, you know, everybody has a bad game. He's not been perfect up the year. But I think it's been this, this cyclical, you know, relationship. He made that better, and in turn, they brought him to another level as well. 
Okay. No, I agree. I agree. He, he, definitely he definitely laid down, laid down that framework, framework last year, too, after taking, taking over the starting position from Joe Flacco. And, and you, know, you, you could, could tell he went on this great run, run led them to the playoffs, the AFC North, North title, played, played a great playoff, playoff game, game against uh, uh, San, San Diego at the time, uh, the Chargers. And I, I think it kind of you know made them around a little more better in the locker room as well. Uh, you, you could definitely, definitely tell guys, guys were getting get behind, behind him, and, and you know, he's, he's doing, doing what he does best, best. and, and you know, we, we got to get up to that level. level. I, think I think it definitely, you know, going off, going off what you said, he definitely escalated their game, game which in turn escalated his game, which just keeps going on and on throughout the year. And yeah, they're making each other better, and it it's definitely an exciting team to watch this year. For sure. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you guys. And like I said, I'm just playing devil's advocate. You know, it, it looks as, you know, you get 11 guys on a Pro Bowl team and then you, you know, it looks as though, you know, the whole team's good, you know. Sure. But Lamar Jackson is having undeniably probably the best quarterback run we've seen in a long time. And I don't think there's any disputing that. Absolutely. All right. So what else popped at you this week, Gavin? You know, I... I'm going to play, play Homer, Homer for just a second because I'm, I'm, I'm a, a Cowboys fan, fan so don't okay. bet against the guys. Um, but, but just, I feel like some of the guys on that team, and they, they did this in Green Bay last year, year just gave up, up right? And that's, that's something, something I, so I play two college sports. sports. I've been, I'm still playing, I still play baseball myself. But I've never, we were, I've been on bad teams, I've been on good teams, but I've never once given up on a coach, a teammate, or even myself, right? I'm not exactly in great shape anymore, but I still go out there and believe I can do it every single time. And I try to prove everybody wrong, right? And Dallas goes out there. They got they, they control their own destiny. They're in a bad division in a year where, I mean, look back at the old, the old Giants when they made the wild card team went on a playoff run and beat Brady in the, in the uh, Super Bowl, right? So they have an opportunity to be this year's Giants, right, and make that run. Their coach sucks. We all agree. Mr. Clancy game. And um, it's terrible. So, so, but you know, look, Amari Cooper, Cooper, I understand he's been dinged up. I, I understand he's a little, little beaten down. But you got to step up in the big games. You want the big money. Dak wants the big money, and it just felt like they gave up, right? Ezekiel Elliott, I love the guy, but he's out there running the ball, and there's a big third down and one. And I understand he was probably winded and needed to come out, but he checks himself out on a third down and one, and then Tony Collard drops the ball, right? Literally fumbles the ball. And, and that, that momentum, momentum shift, shift completely changed the outlook of the game. Um, so what stuck out to me was players giving up on their coach. Last year, Green Bay, this year, Dallas. Um, and it's sickening to me to watch those guys do that. Again, little homer moment because I am a Cowboys fan. Uh, but watching guys give up on their team, whether it's because they didn't feel like they could make a run, whether it's because their coach is horrible and they're trying to get rid of them, I don't know that answer. But that's okay. the do, do you... I'm going to ask you, do you personally believe that this is the Cowboys giving up and saying we don't want Garrett around anymore? Or do you think that there's other underlining issues? So, I mean, I think there's, there's definitely a little more to it than one single problem. And I think anybody who's watched the NFL for the last number of years, Jerry Jones is the, is the ultimate problem at the end of the day, right? If the guy just wrote checks, he'd be the greatest you know, owner of all time. If he was, you know, Mark Cuban... Of the NFL, we'd be in business. They'd be in business. They'd have won 20 Super Bowls by now, probably. Right? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I think they gave up on, on their coach, and that is definitely a problem. And it's, it's unfortunate, and I get it, because I'm not a big fan of Garrett's anymore myself. But there is more to it, right? There is, there is a problem with discipline within the locker. There's a problem with, you know, the, the teammate, and, you know, camaraderie that just isn't there. Um, you know, Amari Cooper is the one that disappoints me the most, right? He just seemed to give up. He was on the sidelines. And like I said, I understand if you're hurt. But get out there. And the, literally the biggest game of the year. Because they could have won last week and lost this coming week and still be at it. Right. So go out there, bust your tail. If you get hurt, you sit out the next week, you got a chance to be in the playoffs, rest this next one, and get back out there. What do you think about it, Jason? So I completely agree with you on that. Um, I, I watched that game. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty much from start to finish, and you, you could, could definitely tell Philadelphia was just, they were in it. They they wanted him way more than Dallas did. did. And I, I definitely think they, the, the team's given up on Garrett. I also, I also think, think Garrett's more given up on the team as well. Um, you know, just some of the calls that he's made, and he's not really, you know, like you pointed out, the Tony Pollard fumble where Zeke came out, you know, any coach call a timeout, you know, give Zeke his moment and go, okay, 
Now go out there and do what I need you to do. You know, we pay you to do this. I need you. So I don't, I think Z coming out. Yeah. He gave up on the team, but Garrett had an opportunity to also be the coach. And he just said, you know what? It's okay. Losing's okay here, which it seems to be the common theme this year for Dallas. And sorry about that, but <laughs> <laughs> no, but hey, I think you're absolutely right. You know what? I think I, you made a great point about the fact that he, that I didn't even think about it from that side about Garrett, but yeah, he should have called a timeout. You got to get Zeke back in there. And if he needs the rest, you call a timeout and get his butt back in there. So great point. No, I actually uh, 100% agree with you on that. I feel like uh, um, Garrett was making some mistakes entirely throughout the season, not even just in that game, but there's been just really fluky calls uh, offensively and defensively. I know that goes on the coordinators, but um, that I'm just kind of like scratching my head because you got probably – for a little while, the uh, Dallas Cowboys were leading the league in offense. I don't know if they are at this point right now, but they were leading the league in offense, but they're sitting at like 500 or below 500 throughout the entire season. So I don't know what you're doing with that, but uh, yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, my biggest takeaway of the week was uh, the Seahawks and uh, their loss to the Arizona Cardinals. And we were sitting at a one, one seed, huge game to lose. Huge game that everybody thought that the Seahawks should have won. Um, but you look at it and step back and look and see three injuries in the running back position and so many defensive injuries. Um, I would be surprised, and me personally, I, I'm a huge Seahawks fan, but I would be surprised to see the Seahawks make it out of the first or second round of the playoffs now. I don't like the Marshawn Lynch um, signing. I'm just saying. I love Marshawn Lynch huge fan of him but um man i i would have much rather seen cj anderson running than march on lynch and he didn't even he got the tryout but then they didn't bring him on right and they signed they signed turban and they signed lynch instead and i mean if, if we had march on lynch of what three four years ago good to go man you're in business yeah he didn't but look good in oakland to me what's that i said he didn't look good in oakland to me no, he, well, he was hurt, and now he hasn't played football, right? Right. And, I mean, we'll go back, like I said, I'll play Homer again. Look at look at Zeke, right, at the beginning of the season. The first three games, the guy did nothing. You know, it doesn't matter how much he's been working out. He hasn't taken those hits. He hasn't been on the field. It's not game speed. And now Lynch has been out of the game for over a year, almost two, almost. And uh, he wants to get back into game speed in half a week. Uh, I, I just don't see it happening. Right. What's your thoughts on it? So... I, I, yeah, <laughs> I definitely think they're kind of just throwing money just in hopes that, you know, it's, it's Marshawn Lynch, you know, coming back to Seattle. It's going to be hype for the locker room, hype for him to come back home. <clears throat> and I, I like where you went with Zeke on that. But, you know, you also got to look at like Melvin Gordon as well this year. He, he sat out for four weeks um, and then he came back. You know, he rushed for 31 yards, 18 yards, 32 yards, another 31 yards four games later. Right. You know, that's what happens when you don't play. You're just not – you're not used to it. You know, yeah, he finally got his breakout game uh, in week nine uh, against Green Bay, but Lynch doesn't have that time. You know, they, they need – they need now. Like, you know, he gets a week pretty much to to get back into the groove, and that's it. Right. And I, I don't think it's going to be enough time for him to, to gel with this offense and uh, to get back into, you know, the football mindset and the football shape that he needs to be in in order to be the, the Marshawn Lynch that they need. Yeah, what so were you saying, Kevin? Great for, the, for Seattle is the fact that they're playing the Eagles' defense, all things, if it stays the same and some, something crazy doesn't happen, they'll play the Eagles. And that Eagles' defense is absolutely terrible. Um, I mean, I know they beat Dallas, but Dallas offense looked like junk. But that Eagles' defense is just beaten and bruised so that the there is a chance that getting through this next week and then getting to the playoffs against the Eagles – there's a chance they could still work out in, in Seattle's favor. Like I said, the second round is a whole other ball game. But who knows? Maybe this next week and then a, a bad defense in the first round can still give them a little bit of life. Well, and I, th I, uh, I don't have any you know bad things to say about what's going on over there in Philadelphia, but uh, just knowing from experience of what's going on with Seattle uh, this season, um, I just know their defense isn't – looking very good in Seattle and Philadelphia's might not be either, but all it takes is a 
a good day for Carson Wentz against Seattle, and that's going to be a rough night. That's true. Very true. Yeah. Um, did you guys have anything else that you guys wanted to pull out from last week, or do you guys want to go into talking about next week's games? Maybe we should jump into next week first. I, 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 there really wasn't, we see, kind of hit some of the, the key points, um, kind of talk about what's going to come up here All right. and what could come from these next week's games. All right, so first on the docket I got is the Chargers versus the Chiefs. That's a trap game right there, man. I'm telling you, that, that is a game that the Chiefs will sit in there and be going, oh, we're in the playoffs, it's not much to worry about. And they're sitting as the, the, I think it's the three seed right now, but there's a chance with a loss from the Patriots they could make a move. And um, I just I see this as a game that they could overlook. Is there too many... Um, reasons for them to be benching starting players to not get that seed? I, you know, when it comes to the, the, the getting the whole seed thing, when it comes to teams that are playing with momentum, like Kansas City is, Kansas City has traditionally a very uh, been a poor defense uh, this year, but they're playing lights out football on the defense right now. I think they need to keep that momentum and I wouldn't worry too much about the seating, but I wouldn't necessarily play the guys the full game, but I definitely wouldn't sit anybody this week. Okay. How do you feel about it, Jason? No, I agree with that. Yeah, if they go into this game, you know, hopefully, just like any other week, it's another game, must win, even though they're in the playoffs, they locked it up. You know, if they're blowing the Chargers out in the first half, I wouldn't be surprised if you see, you know, like Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey and uh, Tyree Kill sit uh, come the second half. And, you know, some of the guys on the defensive side as well, just to make sure, you know, OK, we got this locked up. We did our job. You know, New England loses. You know, we can always move up as well. Um, so, yeah, I guess it really just depends on how they come out and, and play in the first half. You know, if they're having a really, you know, tough game and they're struggling, you know, I'd wouldn't be surprised if we still see all those starters out there in the second half. The the uh, Chargers haven't really been significantly blown out this season, unless you maybe want to look at when they lost to the Vikings. Right. So I always feel, though, that their record is not the prettiest, they're always right there. And if their kicker actually makes some kicks... <laughs> And Philip Rivers is on point, and uh, Melvin Gordon's running well. Man, everything can be clicking on all cylinders. You could beat the Chiefs. I, and this Absolutely. is a divisional matchup. These guys see each other pretty regularly. Um, I feel like the Chiefs should be going 100% on this one and trying to win this. And that's why I got the Chiefs winning this one. I'm going to go with you. I'm going to go with the Chiefs winning this one um, because they're going to have to keep the foot on the pedal. But like I said, they can't overlook them because, to your point, they they almost every one of their first uh, games, of, maybe the first eight games, was decided by seven points or less until they had that game against Minnesota. And they were finding ways to lose. It's not like they, it's not like the other team got the ball at the end and they made a great drive. They beat themselves. I mean, the pass interference by Casey Hayward to give enough time and a distance to give a field goal to um, uh, I can't think of the team they were playing in that one was it the Broncos? It was Denver. Yeah, it was Denver with Drew Locke. That's right, one of his first games. So he ends up putting him in field goal position off of a horrible defensive pass interference. Just a bad decision. So they were inventing ways to lose games. And uh, so, yeah, they're a good enough team to win this game if they put it all together. So, That's the story of the Chargers this season. I feel like they could easily be 10-5 and five and not 5-10. and 10. 100%. Absolutely. Even without Melvin Gordon at the beginning of the season, Eckler was playing at an all at a uh, Pro Bowl caliber level to keep them in that. Uh, and then with Gordon back, he had that, that lull to begin with, but he's playing, he's firing on all cylinders. So yeah, they, they missed out on a lot of opportunity in some close games. What do you, who are you picking, Jason? I'm going to take the, the Chargers on this one. I think uh, it's, like it's it. Phillip Rivers' probably last game, I think. Um, you think so? You think for his Chargers, career I do. or I in, think he's done. In, in a Chargers uniform? Yes, last game in a Chargers uniform. I think okay. he wants to go out with a bang. He says, you know what, we don't really have much to play for, but they do. So I have something to play for now. So let's go out there. Let's give it the best they, you know, best chance they can. I don't think it's going to be by much. They're not going to blow out the Chiefs by any means. But I do think uh, the Chargers definitely get the job done there with potentially Rivers' uh, last game in a Chiefs jersey. 
Chargers jersey. I like it. Okay. Uh, Chargers. <laughs> um, when you're saying that, I just want to ask you, if you had to put Phillip Rivers in any other uniform in the league, where Ooh. do you think he'll go? You know, that's tough. You know, you know, there's definitely teams that need quarterbacks, but, you know, he's he's that kind of guy that, you know, like Drew Brees, they want to be one place their entire career. Um, I, so I don't – if he doesn't get an extension from uh, the Chargers, I actually think he probably retires and is done. Okay. All right. Well, so, you know, the question with Rivers going somewhere, what team is a quarterback away from winning a Super Bowl, right? Because that's the only time you go after a guy like Phillip Rivers toward the end of his career is when you're one player away – from winning a Super Bowl, and I don't think there is a team really out there right now. Buffalo? A, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't really think the quarterback's their only problem. problem. Yeah, that's true. But the, the only other team that really sticks out in my mind is either Tampa Bay or the Bears. But Tampa Bay's got too many holes on defense, I think. What about the Panthers? What's that? What about the Panthers? You know, the, that that's a good question. I think – they have too many injuries on both sides of the ball, though, it seems like. They don't have a good enough wide receiver crew. They have a great, obviously, a great running back. Um, their defense is good, but not great. Um, pull up the rankings on defense. But I don't know. I'm, I'm torn. And the, the whole, the whole, you could whole spin off an entire question about Carolina in general. What are they going to do at quarterback? Because Cam's probably not going to be around. Clearly, Kyle Allen, once they had a little game tape on him, isn't worth it. And right. Will Greer is just too green. He needs, he needs some time. See, okay. my thing with Tampa Bay and you know, saying they may be a quarterback away, I know Winston you know, is probably an interception machine, but he does lead the league in passing yards. So I don't necessarily think that's the problem. He does need to make better decisions with the ball, but he has almost 5,000 yards passing this year. And isn't in the playoffs. I, I mean, yes, I completely agree with that, which means that they are other problems away from being a playoff contending team. It's not just him. Yes, he has his own problems, but they have other issues they need to address probably before him. Yeah, I don't think Jameis Winston's the issue in Tampa. I think he's the only issue. I don't think he's he is an issue, an issue in Tampa. You don't think so? No. He's been part of, they've had some good defenses. He's got some great, great wide receivers, and they still can't win games. He's not clutch. And he does, he's, he's like Tony Romo, okay? He just needs to tighten up, dude. He needs to tighten up a lot, but he's, he is Tony Romo with even better legs. Okay? <laughs> the guy throws an interception whenever the clutch moment. And like I said, I'm a diehard Tony Romo. I got his jersey, his helmet, everything signed and in my basement right here. I love the guy. But Jameis Winston is Tony Romo 2.0. Okay? okay. Can't win a clutch game, can't get to the playoffs, puts up great. I had him in fantasy every year because he puts up numbers like you wouldn't believe. Same thing as Winston this year. Winston will not win postseason games, plain and simple. Okay. All right. So we're all – no, no, no. You're picking – Jason's picking the Chargers. We're picking the Chiefs. Yep. All right. So yeah. let's move right along. Next game on the docket is Packers visiting Detroit. Um, a, f- a few weeks ago, Matt Patricia was um, told that he's going to keep his job next year as well. Um shocking to me after this season that they've had um and i would be surprised to see most of the packers starting in this game i think you'll see them start and then come out yeah okay okay so I, a lot of the conversation so, so i'm in milwaukee so i'm, I'm here in, in green bay land and um a lot of the conversation on sports radio talks and stuff around here is because they still have a chance to jump up into a first round bye, which they really feel they need um, you're seeing a lot of guys talking about the fact that they're going to play, get themselves a lead, and then sit. Okay. No, I completely agree with that, yeah. Um, you know, you got yeah, pretty much a chance to get that first round by. Um, they need it. If, yeah, it's pretty much going to be the, the same thing like with the Chiefs-Chargers game. If they come out, they're playing very well. You'll see some of these players start slowly come out. Aaron Rodgers probably be out there. For the half, they still need him to be about as hot as you can get going into the playoffs, even with the bye. Um, you know, get his confidence up and ready to go with the with the first year coach. But yeah, if they're if they're blowing out Detroit like they're supposed to, uh, you'll see a lot of these players start to come out really early. Agreed. Um, I just don't think Detroit's a, a high caliber team that Packers <clears throat> that the Packers need to worry about. Man, um, I would be surprised to see these guys being you know, in the game past the half. 
even at the half, if I'm being completely honest with you. I think Green Bay is 100% the way better team. And uh, I think uh, there's no way that Detroit's going to win this one, which is why I'm picking Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm picking, I'm picking, a, picking I'm the picking Packers. A victory. Blowout well, victory by Green Bay. Uh, even if they weren't to start Rodgers, I think the Packers' backup lineup is better than the third-string Detroit lineup they have going right now. Okay. I 100% agree with you on that. It's not even going to be a, a game. It's going to be a blowout. No chance, unfortunately, for Detroit to even come up with moral victories in this game, I think. It's going to be a pretty one-sided affair. Now, to be fair, David Blau was offered, like, he, they were going to buy him some crazy truck or something, some some super fan of, like, Minnesota or something like that, or somebody, I can't remember what it was, was going to buy David Blau, the quarterback for, for Detroit, some giant truck if he can find a way to beat Green Bay this weekend. So he's got a little extra motivation, but uh, I'm going to pick a double-digit victory by Green Bay. Oof, I like that. Okay, all right. Next in is the Bears versus the Vikings, and the Vikings are locked into the number six seed. Right. Locked in. Mm -hmm. Does this game really matter? No, not at all. Nope. Not for the Vikings, no. The Bears, maybe. You know, they're sitting at seven and eight, a chance to finish 500 and have – some moral victory, some things to take away from this season, but for the most part, it's been a pretty dismal year for that team. Uh, defense banged up, uh, offense not clicking on any cylinders for the most part, and you know I think uh, Matt Nagy's team is definitely going to try to come out and try to hit it hard on offense, and you know just come away with things that they can go into next year saying, okay, we did some positive things against a really good team. Um, so Minnesota may not have much to play for, but I think Chicago is going to come out um, and, and definitely look like a different Bears team, the Bears team of last year that we know. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go with you. I think I'm going to pick the Bears to win this one myself, and here's why. Because you're not going to see Dalvin Cook because they can't get any better. Even if he's healthy enough to play, he's not going to play. Madison, the backup running back, isn't going to play for the same reason. I think you probably see a couple of like Kirk Cousins may come out and play a little bit, but I don't, I don't expect him to play much. It doesn't matter to them. But it does matter to Mitch Trubisky, right? He's got a lot of doubters still to prove wrong. He's been he's been beaten pretty bad in games and in social media lately. So he's got a lot to prove. He's got a big contract coming up. They got to make a decision in Chicago. Do they stick with him? Do they make a move like a Cam Newton? Maybe a Philip Rivers? They got decisions to make, and he has to step up and say, "No, I'm your guy." So I think he steps up. I'm going to go with four touchdowns out of the guy. Probably about 60, 70 yards, even rushing on the ground. And um, I think Trubisky ends up winning this game, uh, which doesn't mean anything, but Trubisky wins this game for Chicago. Yeah, I agree with you. I think Mitch Trubisky is going to have a huge game, and I think he's going to be fighting for a job if he does not win this game. Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, my, my pick's the Bears. Both of you guys are picking the Bears as well? Bears. Bears. All right. Let's move on to the Browns. Versus the Bengals, and little little note to add: the the Browns have won three consecutive games against the Brown or the Bengals. Both teams not looking so great this year. But based on sheer talent alone, the Browns will win this game. Yes, At the absolutely. End of the day, two junk teams playing for absolutely nothing. Talent will win out. Uh, Andy Dalton is checked out. He doesn't care one bit about Cincinnati. There's no AJ Green. Joe Mixon is the only one that's even trying worth a darn. Um, so they're done. You go over to the other side of the ball, they still got a lot to prove. Baker's got a lot to live up to. Jarvis Landry's been playing well, so he'll continue to go. Nick he's been Chubb having a, a lot monster. of hip issues, though. What's that? I've, I said he's been having a lot of hip issues, though. Yeah, so that's another thing. You may not see a guy like him getting all, all the snaps like he might normally, but OBJ's got a ton to prove. Do you see OBJ well. sticking around next year? I know his contract's through that, but he might whine and complain a little bit to get out. He said, the tough part is he said he's there, right? He came out and said, I'm here, I'm in there. And he went out and uh, he bought presents for the community. He's done a lot of stuff in, in Cleveland lately. I don't personally think he's going to go anywhere, partially because, man, that taints his, his legacy, right? Because he looks like crap for a year. If they come back and have a great year next year, it can be the growing pains, right? of a new team with all the stars and all of that together. So I personally, I think we'll end up seeing OBJ back in Cleveland next year. I agree with you. Go ahead, Jason. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I definitely think there are, there are a few 
key pieces away from being a contender in the North. You know, you got Pittsburgh, who had an unfortunate year losing, you know, Big Ben to start the year for the most part, and they've had a pretty dismal year. You know, no one was really catching up to Baltimore for the most part, but they could have still fought for, you know, a wild card spot in that division. You know, I think a lot of the pieces on offense are there for the most part. Their defense may need a little work. Uh, I'll see what happens to the fate of Garrett in the offseason. They may need to get a, a replacement for him. But, I mean, you had Chubb 1,400 yards on the ground. Landry had a 1,000-yard season. Baker Mayfield, he had flashes of greatness in some games. Other games, he looked like the biggest bust um, in the draft. You know, he's sitting at 19 touchdowns, 18 picks this year. So he, he definitely has a lot to prove as well. Uh, going off like the, you know, Trubisky does as well for the Bears. So I think you'll see him come out um, and, and try to find OBJ and Landry, maybe Chubb out of the backfield too, just to try to make himself look a little better. Um, I don't think that he has to play for a job, but he's definitely got something to prove for himself and for all his haters. What about Kareem Hunt? What do you guys think about Kareem Hunt? Does he have the most to gain or lose from these last opportunities? So I think at this point, and this is my opinion on this one, is that uh, Kareem Hunt is probably better suited somewhere else with how well Nick Chubb has been doing. Nick Chubb is Agreed. clearly the answer in Cleveland. And um, Kareem Hunt, you know, that's a great one-two punch, but you don't need to be paying that guy that the amount that they're paying him when you got Nick Chubb in the backfield. I agree. No, uh, that... That game against the Bengals for Kareem Hunt is pretty much going to be a tryout for another team. You know, yeah. He's going to show exactly what he can do because uh, they may play Chubb a little bit, but I think they're going to try to limit him uh, as far as carries just to make sure he doesn't get hurt and anything significant happens to him for next year because, yeah, he is the answer. He is going to be their guy going forward. So I, I think you'll see. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, no, uh, I, I think you're going to see Hunt get a lot more touches than he's used to, and he's going to make the most of it because uh, he'll probably end up playing uh, somewhere else next year, I think. Yeah, I, I'm, Baker Mayfield may uh, be the quarterback, but I feel like Kareem, or not Kareem, uh, Nick Chubb is the answer there right now. I feel like mm -hmm. if, you know, I like Baker Mayfield, nothing against him, but if you plugged in maybe a little tighter of a quarterback, you might be looking at a positive season instead of a 6 and. 10, 7, and 9. Yeah, they don't need a great quarterback. They don't need a Peyton Manning. They, they don't need a Tom Brady. They don't need a Drew Brees. They need a game manager who's got a decent enough arm and more accuracy, right? They need a – I don't even know who you could look at in comparison, but you, you need a Deshaun Watson. You need a Matt Ryan. You need a um, – you know, even a, a, a Tennessee uh, with um, – Tannehill. You know, Mar Tannehill. Mariota or, or Tannehill could jump in there. And probably be their smarter quarterbacks, right? They got a little more seasoning under them. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, mm -hmm. Kareem Hunt have his, having a crazy game against the Bengals, who just are an awful, awful team. That's going to be my takeaway for this. Uh, the Browns win it, but by a slim margin. I give them four points. I agree, I agree with that. All right. Next on the uh, schedule will be the Saints visiting the Panthers. Um, the Saints, uh, 34 plus points in three straight games. Do you think that they're going to even bring Drew Brees out there to, to extend this record or anything like that? Maybe for the first half, you'll see them kind of, you know, like some of these other games that, you know, they they really don't have a lot to play for, but they do at the same time a little bit to prove. But I think you'll see Brees come in for a little bit. You know, he'll maybe throw a touchdown or two, and then they'll probably take him out. You know, they don't want anything happening to him because, you know, they obviously locked up a playoff spot at 12-3. and three. They're just killing it on offense right now. So I don't really think they need to show anything you know, significant in this game, just enough to keep the, you know, the gears turning and everything as smooth as possible. I see what you're saying, but I actually think you'll see Drew Brees minimally three quarters. He probably plays the full four. Um, it's an outside shot, but they got a, they have a small shot at the, at the two seed. It's very, very unlikely, but it could happen. But I think that Drew Brees is the kind of quarterback. He likes to live off of momentum. He will be out there playing for that team. He wants the ball in his hands. He didn't, he didn't like coming out at the end of games when they're up by 50 points, right? When it literally means nothing 
And so I don't see him coming out unless Sean Payton pulls him out for that reason, right? I, I'm on the other direction. I think he's the kind of quarterback and he's got the, you know, the clout like a Brady, like a Rodgers, like a Roethlisberger that can say, nope, I'm in the game. And I think he will exercise that, uh, that clout and say, sorry, Sean Payton, I'm in this game right now. I think the Saints win by a significant margin. You're going to see Drew Brees at least three quarters, if not four, because of what Gavin's saying. Um, but uh, on the other side of the ball, Christian McCaffrey is going to have 100 yards at least against that Saints defense. Rushing or total offense? Rushing. When was the last time that guy had 100 yards rushing in a game? I couldn't tell you. I don't either. It's been that long, so I, I didn't look up exactly, but he's been he's been getting like 150 to 200 yards total, but it's been a mix of run pass, right? Yep. I don't I kind I don't think it's been five or six weeks since he's had 100 yards rushing I think, itself. I think this week's going to be 100 yards for him. Is that would you go okay? Yep. I hope so. I like the guy. Yeah. I like him in Stanford. I like the fact that he's he's a small, shifty running back. I hope he does well. I just hate that he's with Carolina because they suck. But. Yeah, I actually had to look that up. I was kind of curious. Uh, he had 108 against Green Bay in Week 10. Okay. So All right. I, I definitely see where he's coming from. I do think that he probably will break 100 yards rushing, uh, but I think he's probably going to have close to 200 total yards. Uh, I think they're going to rely on him more heavily in the pass game um, how much do against they, this team. How much does he need to break the scrimmage yard record? Oh, that's a good question. Ooh. I should have looked that up. Yeah. Um, that's a good one. So that's the only reason why I think he's going to stay in, and that's the reason why I think they're going to punch him in the ball. It could be. Should. You've got to give something to the fans to, to hold on to into next season. Your quarterback plays been a disaster. You fired Ron Rivera. you got to give him Christian McCaffrey. Yep. And right. I think we'll gladly take that load. Yep, that's why I'm giving him the 100 yards in this game. I know it's been a while. <laughs> and I'm glad you brought it up because I didn't want to be the one to say it. <laughs> but, uh, Christian McCaffrey is going to have a 100-yard game just rushing in this one because of that. I hope uh, so. Saints win by a significant margin, though. 21-point uh, victory. There we go. You too, Jason? Easily. Uh, e right. Easily three touchdowns. Uh, Bills are locked in at the five seed in the AFC. The next matchup is the Jets versus the Bills. I think this is a throwaway game for the Bills. No reason for anybody to be, you know, risking getting hurt in this one. The Jets are 6 and 9 and honestly who really cares if you lose at week 7 17 to the Jets. No, I think you'll see like we've talked about a couple of those. I think you'll see them in there as long as they they feel they need to accomplish something. That could be one drive or it could be the whole game, right? It depends on when they feel like they've accomplished what they need to. If they feel they need to work on play action, if they feel they need to work on whatever it is, right? They're going to be in there until that moment and then they're out. No, I agree with that. This is definitely more of a tune-up game than anything for Buffalo. You know, the Jets really not having a whole lot to play for, more pride than anything. You know, they, they beat the Steelers last week, so they got that. They're riding a... You know, a little more momentum, a little more momentum off of that. Um, so I think we'll see them come out, probably play a little harder than than normal, just for morale's sake. But yeah, for the most part, you'll see Buffalo work on what they need to work on, and that'll be the end of it. I like it. Uh, I got Bills by seventeen. I'm gonna go Bills by about ten. Okay. Very I got Bills. I got Bills by about six. <laughs> Okay. All right. Next one. Patriots clinch first round bye with a win over the Miami Dolphins. This one's in Gillette, and I don't think there's any chance that the Dolphins beat uh, the Patriots in in New England. No, absolutely not. Not a chance. I mean, the Patriots beat them what forty three nothing. I think on the road at the beginning of the year. This is, uh, yeah, at home. Crowd's going to be insane. And one, one I one think one it's going to be an even higher scoring game than that. Sorry, not yeah, one I'm not going to put a buy on the on the side on the. Yeah, first round buy is a huge thing. I'm not going to put a number on it, but the Patriots want to put a stamp on this one, and the Patriots will put a stamp on this one. 
First round bye goes to the Patriots, in my opinion. Absolutely. I think they win. Now, the thing is, I don't think it's going to be a total blowout, personally, because I don't know how much they're going to play their starters. And to be honest, Miami's put up some points lately. They're not good. They're not going to win the game, and they're not going to keep the Patriots under 25 points. But they might score 20 themselves um, because of the way – I mean, Fitzpa- Fitz magic, if you want to call him that. Every now and then, the guy goes crazy. And I watch him throw another – I think they said he's – thrown four touchdown passes in a game for five different teams in the NFL. Yeah. The guy knows how to put up points. He throws, He's another another guy that throws interceptions. But watch the guy throw for four touchdowns against the, that defense because they're not going to let everybody play the whole game. They're just not too. Belichick's smarter than that. But, again, they're going to do the same thing. They're going to get out there. They're going to work on a couple of things. They're going to get the lead. They're going to pull the guys. Um, like Brady will stay out there longer than any of us actually want to see him out there. Um, but he will play, and then they'll pull him. They will still win the game, but I don't think it's going to be a 20-point victory by any means. I like it. So, Patriots all across the board. Yes. Yep. All right, Falcons, Buccaneers. Falcons have won five of the last six games against the Buccaneers. I feel that the Falcons have had a horrible season and that this game actually means a lot to them. Yes. And the Buccaneers... 100%. Are just trying to, you know, scrape by a 500 uh, season. I don't think it really means so much to the Buccaneers as much as it means to the Falcons. And Matt Ryan has been throwing the ball like a machine. Matt Ryan's True. looked good all season. You know, he's thrown some interceptions here and there. I don't know what number he's at right now. Where, where is he at? He's at 14 for the year. 14. How many touchdowns has he got? 25. 25. That's not a terrible ratio. Um, no, I don't not think bad at all. I don't think Matt Ryan is the issue. I think they got a lot of injuries this season, and yeah. next year they'll bounce back. Uh, give me the Falcons in this one. Tell me what you guys are thinking. I say Falcons by a touchdown. Yeah, they've been playing lights out for the most part the past few weeks. Um, Matt Ryan has looked like the Matt Ryan of the Super Bowl year and uh, his MVP year. He just. He's locked in. He's focused. Um, I, I don't think Tampa Bay is going to have too much of an answer for him. The run game has been so-so, uh, so they're not going to rely too much on uh, Freeman uh, and Eo Smith. But I, I, I do think Atlanta definitely pulls this one out by uh, by a touchdown. I'm saying fire those cannons. Buccaneers pull out a victory in this one. This means more to Jameis Winston and Bruce Arians than it does to the Falcons. Matt Ryan has nothing to prove. He's an MVP. He's been to the Super Bowl. Yes, he lost, but he's been there, right? His job is secure next year. Julio Jones is secure next year. The only question mark was their head coach, and the ownership is given, uh, can given the blessing that it looks like they're going to keep everybody around, right? With injuries and all that. But the real question mark is what's going on down in Tampa Bay. They have more to prove. Jameis Winston's going to throw four touchdowns, 400 yards, and two interceptions. Maybe only two. Only two? <laughs> Only two. But there could be a fumble. That's that's the wild card, okay. right? Okay. He has three total three... turnovers. All right. Right. So he, he has a problem with fumbling more so than, than any other running back in the league themselves. But uh, so he, he has, has more three, fumbles three than Chris now. Carson? What's that? He has more fumbles than Chris Carson? I, I think maybe per rush attempt on average. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I like that. That's awesome. Let's let's change it up and get some diversity in here. That's good. Um, what do you think is going to happen in the running back position for both of these teams next year? Oh, geez. So I, I think Atlanta, Atlanta was hurt by not having Tevin Coleman, right? So Tevin Coleman is over in San Francisco. He's shown moments of brilliance. Um, he's been a little banged up there as well, just like he actually was in Atlanta. But they've, they've had to rely way too heavily on Freeman. He's hurt. There's just not enough of a run game and enough power behind Matt Ryan to even allow him to get the pass game going. They have to make a splash, whether it's in the draft or whether it's in free agency. They need to get a running back. Tampa Bay also is in the exact same boat. They have no run game. It's it's pathetic. Every single week I sit there and I talk about on my show, I, I bring up, oh, Winston threw for 400 yards, and there was no run game, right? It, it's pathetic. So both teams need to invest in the run game, whether it's getting a you know, second head to the monster because in, in Tampa, they could still just add another complimentary back and, you know, fight down there. In uh, Atlanta, that's all they've ever done. So now relying on one guy as the workforce just isn't going to work. Um, so they need to go after it. I think a guy like Melvin Gordon, uh, Melvin Gordon could end up in one of those two places. And, in fact, there was um, 
I had confirmed, I saw text messages at the beginning of the season that Melvin Gordon actually took a physical and was in talks with the Tampa Bay um, uh, Buccaneers, but nothing ever worked out. They couldn't work out contract details, and he went back and sat on his couch at home. So I know for a fact he was sitting in Tampa Bay's locker room getting a physical. Oh. Hmm. So it just didn't work out. So I couldn't report anything, but I did, you know, did allude to it a little bit, but he was there. What do you think about it, Jason? So, yeah, I definitely think they both need to add some sort of one-two punch uh, at running back. You know, Freeman being hurt, yeah, the loss of Coleman definitely uh, hurt Atlanta uh, pretty pretty heavily this year. And you can see it. You know, Freeman only had – he had under 600 yards and two touchdowns on the ground. He was hurt a little bit. Uh, Ito Smith kind of filled that position not very well, but he was there. Uh, <laughs> so, um I definitely think they're going to look to add uh, another one-two punch like they had with uh, Freeman and Coleman. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see whether they get another big body that can take those blows or if they're going to look for another passing back. Um, and I did actually, I, I did see that report about uh, Melvin Gordon and the Buccaneers. I was kind of hoping and praying because you know, big fantasy guy had Eckler and then I, I uh, you know, it was kind of like, okay, what is Gordon going to do? Because then it's going to really kind of scare me. So I definitely think Gordon is going to be a compliment somewhere. But I'm not sure if it's going to be Tampa Bay. They need a lot of help all over the place. The running back position a little bit. I like Ronald Jones. I like what he's done out there. Um, he is. He is fast. Um, I, I just don't think they've really had a line um, or any kind of play call help to <laughs> to get him going. So I don't think – getting rid of or uh, putting Jones in a backseat position to someone is going to be the answer. Um, so hopefully they look to beef up that line for, for both Winston and Jones. I mean, you know, they both need as much help as they can up front. Okay. I, I was curious because both teams have some running back issues. That's why I brought it up. So I just wanted to see what you guys' opinions on it was. I like both of them. Um, next game that we got going on, I'm going to try and speed this up a little bit here. Um, mm -hmm. next game we got going on will be the Raiders and the Broncos. And I feel like it's a trash game for both of them. I don't really think either team, I don't know, man, maybe the Raiders are trying to fight for 500, but I, John Gruden set for a long time and he's got a runway plan. And I know in about three years, I think the Raiders are going to be a real contender in this division. Um, and I feel like the Raiders know that. So, I don't... They, they can ahead. still make the playoffs. <laughs> a lot it's needs to for that, but it's, yeah. It's, it's possible. plausible. So, I'm, I'm going to find this picture. I saved, I saved everything that has to happen. I actually sent it, it, I sent it in the group chat that we're in on, on Game Changer Sports Network. Yep, that's why I saved it. So... The Raiders need to win at the Broncos. Doable. Very doable. Titans need to lose at the Texans, which is also doable. Steelers have to lose to the Ra uh, Steelers lose at the Ravens, which that's the big question mark in my opinion because Lamar and uh, Ingram are neither one is playing. And then the Colts have to beat the Jaguars. All four things are very possible, if not probable. Right? Yeah. Now, the only question mark is that third point, right? The Steelers losing to the Ravens. Now, is RG3 good enough to beat Delvin Hodges? Right? That's the question. This Which is what RG I'm Go ahead. Go ahead. Right? Yeah. So, so this is what I'm saying. This is, a, this is a trash game for them because I don't really – there's so many working pieces that could it, – it's possible. And, and all of them are actually really probable. <laughs> but do you really want to risk all of these things just so that... I mean, this is what I'm saying is John Gruden's got a runway. And the right. Raiders are not a good enough team in the AFC to make it very far in the playoffs. True. Is that disputable? No, not at all. I 100% agree with you. If you're John Gruden, are you fighting like this is a Super Bowl run game? Because if I'm John Gruden, I'm not. But I still think the Raiders are going to win. They've all they've already effectively shut down Josh Jacobs. He had that surgery. He's done, right? So they've given right. up on that side of it. The only, the only real wild card in this whole thing is Derek Carr. Because everybody's questioning 
What is he worth? What has he got? Where is he going to be, right? There's already rumors of them saying they're done with him in Oakland. He's going to be gone. And with the whole XFL thing and Andrew Luck's dad being out there, that the Raiders are going to find a way to bring Andrew Luck back from retirement and bring him out to, to, to L.A. And Derek Carr is going to be thrown to the curb. Well, Derek Carr's got something to prove, whether it's him staying with the Raiders or with him going somewhere else. So there's the only X factor, right? Does he come out there to win the game? Or does he under, you know, or has Gruden had a conversation saying, hey, you're our guy, let's not worry about it this year? Because I agree with you, Gruden's got this long play, right? The whole thing has been a long play. Getting these draft picks, that if you go to those, those big analytical guys, and they said that Khalil Mack only gave you this many wins per season, right? Well, they were a two-win team, so three wins only puts you at five wins, right? So who cares about Khalil Mack if you're still not going to be a playoff team? So trade him for a bunch of guys, a bunch of picks, that will earn you 10 more wins over the next couple of seasons. So Gruden's a smart man, but will Derek Carr come out there and want to win that game for himself? Yeah, that's definitely going to be the key to see. If Carr comes out and he kind of looks slow and they're really just handing the ball off and checking it down, I don't think Oakland's really going to be in it. Um, my thing is – I. If you're Oakland, you know, this is your last season as the Oakland Raiders. You know, you're moving to Vegas next year. Do you want to make that fan base happy? Do you want, you know, this team to go out with that with that big bang before you move and that kind of stuff? So I, I kind of see both sides. I, I don't think it's going to be that great of a game uh, to begin with. But I, I do think the Raiders do come out on top. I don't think all this stuff happens to where they, they need it to happen for them to make the playoffs, but they at least finish 500 this year before moving out of Oakland. Momentary devil's advocate about the caring about the fan base and leaving with the fan base. If they gave two craps about the fan base, they wouldn't be leaving. I agree with that, but okay. also, okay. side note, how many times in the last couple of weeks have you watched a Raiders game and they're on the road and there's more Raiders fans in the stands than there are the other team. That's a good point. They, the Raiders fans are fanatics. They're true fanatics. I don't think Vegas is not that far away from Oakland, realistically. I don't think it's going to be that much of a difference. I, you, you know, you're probably, you're probably right on that, that aspect of it. All right. So, we're all picking the Raiders. Yes. Raiders. All right. Redskins, Cowboys. Cowboys have won six of the last Redskins meetings. <laughs> the Red, the Redskins are 3-12. and 12, The Cowboys are 7-8. and eight. Let's go to Gavin. Tell me what you're thinking. How about them Cowboys? They're going to win this one because there is one last chance for them to get in to the playoffs. And if they do, then it's good for them. If they don't, they can still blame Jason Garrett. But if they win and the Eagles win, they can still blame Jason Garrett. So it might as well go out with a bang. It doesn't really do them any good to win or lose. It doesn't matter for their positioning or anything at all. So I think they go out there. Uh, they win this game. They absolutely trash the Redskins. Zeke won't play that much. Dak will play more. Uh, Dak will go off for four touchdowns. He'll beat the Redskins. They're going to win like 27-7. to Are you concerned at all about Dak Prescott's shoulder injury? No, not at all. Okay. Um, he's the, the reason being is everybody looked at the game, oh, his shoulder must be still hurting because he's throwing the ball high. Does anybody watch the Cowboys game? The guy misses high or behind the, the wide receiver every other throw anyway. So i do not worried about his shoulder personally. The only thing I'm worried about is them getting a deal done with him and uh, Amari Cooper because you can't probably pay both of them $30 million plus um, along with Zeke already being the highest paid running back in the history of the game and still be able to compete for more than one year. Because they just signed Jalen Smith. They still got to sign Byron Jones, uh, uh, Leighton Vander Esch, and keep that offensive line together. They're in big trouble. As a, non, as, a, as a non-Cowboys fan, would you rather see Dak Prescott or Amari Cooper in a Cowboys uniform? Jason, let me know. <laughs> I was actually about to ask that same question. Um, I personally... I would probably rather see Dak. You know, he he definitely is a good quarterback. He he knows his stuff. He's smart with the ball for the most part. Uh, yeah, he's got some accuracy issues, but I mean, Jameis Winston still has a job, so there's hope. Um, <laughs> I, I definitely think, unfortunately, Amari probably leaves unless they can get a deal done for him to have probably significantly less money. Um, but I, I personally, I'd rather see Dak uh, on that team. Okay. All right. 
So, are we all picking the Cowboys across the board then? How about them Cowboys? I say the Redskins upset the Cowboys. Whoa! I think there's too much on the line for the Cowboys. That the Redskins are like, you know what? Let's go out there and let's ruin some people's days. I'm sorry. I have, I, I'm have. i going to play the devil's advocate. I think the Redskins go out there. It's going to be only by three. It's going to be by a field goal, but they're going to pull it off. Is this Adrian Peterson's last season? Put me on watch for a couple of days, okay? <laughs> and then watch the show on Sunday night. Watch my show because I will be sitting here like this the entire time, just talking from under my arm if that happens. I'm not even joking. I, I might not even. I might put my son on to do the show instead of me, four years old, because it would be that big of a clown show. If they lose that game, I might as well let my son do the show. <laughs> Is this Adrian Peterson's last game? Yes. No. See ya. Retired. I don't think he's. I think he's coming back next season. I don't think he's done yet. In Washington or with another team? Playing football. Right. So he'll be somewhere in the NFL. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be with Washington next year. I, I, but I definitely think he still has enough left in the tank, and for himself personally, yeah, he loves the game so much. He, he's going to come back for at least one more run, hopefully with a team that can actually get him somewhere. What do you guys think about the quarterback position in, in Washington? Lots of promise. I think Dwayne Haskins, I, I wish Keenum hadn't gotten hurt. I wish, uh, now obviously I'm a, I'm a Redskins hater being a Cowboys fan, but <laughs> the fact that you look at the, the NFC East and the young quarterbacks light up, I, I'm looking forward to the, to the rivalry games for the next several years. Haskins, if he could have had a chance to sit the bench the entire season and then come in next year having, he barely played any college football to begin with, right? So now you're making that leap of one year of college football, which is a huge step from high school football. Then you're making that huge leap to the NFL, which is an even bigger leap in football. And the guy has barely played it. So having a chance to watch that game speed and get a feel for it at the beginning of the season was good. It would have been better for him to hit this the whole season. I'm still excited as a football fan for the division and for Washington because he's got a ton of ability, a lot of promise. Uh, but I just hope he loses every game. So Okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, no, I agree. I definitely like what uh, what Haskins has shown uh, so far this year. Yeah, they haven't obviously had the greatest of years, finishing three and twelve. Um, you know, I'm definitely I, I love Case Keenum. I love what he's done in his career. You know, it's definitely unfortunate what happened. You know, Haskins had to be in that situation, but I definitely you you can tell he's progressed um, with what he's able to do this Absolutely. year um, and showing his ability a little more and more every week. You know, they kind of let the reins off a little bit um, and just hoping that, you know, he, you know, has that one big play that shows, okay, that's why we drafted him. That's why he's here. That's why he made that leap after just, you know, one solid year in college. Um, I definitely think they need to add a few more things, um, weapons for him to, uh, to be able to, be successful, but there, there's definitely a lot of promise there in Washington. Okay. Totally um, what do you guys know anything about Alex Smith at all? Nothing? So he said he, from what I saw, he said he wants to come back and play again, right? And that he's rehabbing and progressing. I don't know what to what level he's at with his rehab, but he said he wants to come back and play quarterback again. Would you rather see Haskins or Smith in Washington? As a Cowboys fan, I would rather see Alex Smith. <laughs> All right. As a football fan with no bias on there, I would rather see Dwayne Haskins. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's move this one right along. We got the Steelers versus the Ravens. And the Steelers have not lost a Week 17 game since 2007, and that was versus Baltimore. Who was the quarterback in that game? In 2007? Probably Ben Roethlisberger, yeah. right? And every game that they've won since in those Week 17s has been Ben Roethlisberger. We're not even talking Mason Rudolph. We're not talking Ben Roethlisberger. We're talking the duck quack guy, right? This, I mean, there is there is no – I don't even care. You could put me in at quarterback with that team without Lamar Jackson, without Mark Ingram, and I would still put personally put money on the Ravens to win this game for with no other reason other than the fact that they are going to just want to beat the Steelers, because who doesn't want to beat the Steelers, yeah. right? You Would you like to be the team that is the number one overall seed, sitting at 13-2, and two, and then add the third loss to that team with no James Conner, with the banged-up Juju, and no Ben Roethlisberger? I wouldn't want to have that on my conscience. 
Would you want to look at your fan base going into the playoffs and say, hey, we just lost, lost to those guys? No. Yeah, you can't have one, so. you can't have that blemish on your season. This awesome season that the Ravens have been having, you cannot let that happen. The Ravens, it doesn't matter if Lamar Jackson or any of the starters are in the secondary or the second string people for the Ravens will pull this one off. I don't think it'll be a blowout by any means. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but it'll be. I, I still think the Ravens. Yes. Sorry. So I am a Ravens fan. This has been probably one of the most exciting Ravens years I've ever seen. I love it. I love Flacco. He did great things for us. Um, but Lamar just, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll give you an amp, but I'm a huge Flacco fan. So hey, like, He was I, Super Bowl MVP. I can't really you know, take too much away from the guy. <laughs> I got a lot of hate for saying that I thought that he was going to be a Hall of Fame quarterback. I got a Ooh, lot of oh, hate for that. Probably shouldn't have said that. I still yeah, believe no, it. I, I don't even say that. No, I still not. believe it. <laughs> he had the arm talent for it. He just couldn't put it all together. Past I still think it'll yet. happen. That's but all right. I, yeah, I definitely, you know, it's like you beating Washington or you know the Cowboys <laughs> beating Washington. I want to beat the Steelers more than anything in the world. I don't care if we go. <laughs> I don't care if we go 2-14 and 14 for the entire year. As long as those two wins are against Pittsburgh, I'm happy. <laughs> so I definitely think Baltimore's going to come out with some fire. Yeah, exactly. I, I definitely think they're going to come out with some fire. It's going to be close. Baltimore pulls it off 14-2. and two. Big 12-game win streak going into the playoffs. Boom. How does RG3 do? If you're, if you're, so you're a Ravens fan. How, mm-hmm. much, how good a game is RG3 going to have? Not that great. Um, he'll probably throw probably for a modest 150, 175. They're probably going to rely more on their run game behind Gus Edwards. And probably you're going to see Justice Hill probably get a lot more touches than he's used to. But he's going he's gonna to show exactly what he did at Oklahoma State and why he's just that good of a running back to be in that backfield with you know uh, Mark Ingram. I'm going to put Lamar Jackson in the backfield too and uh, Gus Edwards. I think their defense is going to make the big difference in this one. Mm-hmm. I, I don't really think it relies on the offense. I think that the Ravens' defense, even their second-string defense, is just that much better than whatever the Steelers throw out there. So, uh, give me the Ravens in this one. Uh, Tennessee Titans, Texans. Texans clinch. Texans clinch a playoff berth with a win. Texans this is going to be. Texans Go ahead, already, Jason. Yeah. Go ahead, Jason. No, no, he's right. I know. I see where he's going with that. Texans actually already have the playoffs, but it's the Titans that if they win. Oh, excuse um, me. Yep, you're right. I'm sorry. Okay, I just want to make sure I wasn't losing. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you guys are right. Tit- <laughs> Titans yeah. clinch. I'm sorry. So I think this is probably going to be that the most exciting bad. game of the week. Um, you know, Texans. Yeah, they obviously want to beat the divisional rival. It's a huge game. Titans, though, they have the most to play for right now out of all these teams. You know, they're sitting at eight and seven right with Pittsburgh. All they have to do is win. That's it. This you know, I'm I'm sure the Ravens will take care of Pittsburgh, but it doesn't matter. Just win. That's all you have to do. You win, you're in. Yep. So they 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 have a lot on the line. This is in out. Houston though. How how much of a factor of it being in Houston and how much do you think that you see the starters against Tennessee just to snuff them of a playoff run? I think everybody, both sides, four, four quarters, is going to be a battle. Okay. You know, the Texans don't want Tennessee, obviously, in the playoffs. They okay. want them out. That's just a divisional thing. You don't want them in. But Tennessee, obviously, they, they, they want to get in. They want to beat their rival, and they also want to get in the playoffs. Okay. So it, it's going to be a huge, uh, huge matchup. Um, I, I say the Titans win it, and they, they lock it up. Okay. I'm, I'm with you because, I mean, who would you rather see in the playoffs? The Titans, the Steelers, or the Raiders, right? Those are your three options to get in the playoffs left. And I tell you what, the Steelers are banged up. You'd love to play them in the playoffs. The Raiders are missing their star running back and haven't played great lately. So I'd love to play them. You don't want to play the Titans, and Tannehill is on his comeback tour, right? The guy has something to prove to everybody, and he's already unseated Marcus Mariota, which is a feat in and of itself, right? Even if he's playing bad, the guy's always been in the starting lineup. So Tannehill has the most to gain from it in addition to just the Titans. So I personally, I, I'm picking the Titans to win this one. I don't care 
the fact that the Texans are already in. They want to win this game because they don't want to lose going into the playoffs. But Tennessee has everything to gain, especially Tannehill. Tannehill comes out, they win by double digits. Yeah, I agree with you, Gavin. I think uh, Tennessee is really, really fighting for that run. Whether they believe that they're going to have a great playoff run or not, they're fighting for it. And Tannehill is seriously coming back and making a name for himself. He's had a phenomenal comeback season. And to take over for the Tennessee Titans and do as well as he has, uh, this is a very crucial game for the Tennessee Titans. And I got the Titans winning by three points. It'll be a good game. I, I will be have, I will have that game on my screen for sure. Oh, yeah. 100%. All right. Next one is the Colts. The Jaguars, the Colts have won the two out of three of their last meetings. This one's in Jacksonville. Who do you guys got? I'm going to go with the Jags, only because I love Minshew Magic, and I just added one of his helmets to my collection. Um, <laughs> but honestly, this may sound bad, but who cares? They're both terrible teams on a terrible year, so the average fan, nobody cares. But there is a whole lot more to this game than meets the eye, right? It's more than just a win or a loss. Is Brissett the future? Is Minshew the future? Or do they stick with Nick Foles down there? Does, does Indy look for another option? Um, so there's a lot of quarterback play in this. The Jags just got rid of Tom Coughlin. So there's a lot of storylines in this game that, don't, that are, are deeper than just you know, the surface of the water there, right? So me, I'm going to pick the Jags because Minshew has something to prove so that they don't keep Foles around and send him on his tour of the NFL. And... Um, so Jags win a close one, three point victory. No, I agree with that. Yeah, you know, I definitely liked. Uh, I've, I've liked what I've seen from from Minshew so far. So <clears throat> you're going to look to see him keep that up against Indianapolis, especially at home. You know, he, you know, crowd behind him. It's going to be it's going to be a very hyped game just for Jacksonville only. Unfortunately, Indianapolis and really both teams, like you said, they don't really have much to play for. It's a who cares game. Um, I don't think Brissett will be the answer in the future. But he's going to come out and play like he has something to prove. Um, you know, the bad part is if Minshew does prove something to the owners uh, and the coaches and, uh, you know, and everyone and everyone else, what are they going to do with Foles? You know, does he just sit there and collect the check? Are they going to get rid of him? You know, it, it'll definitely be a huge story in the offseason. Um, but I think it definitely just rides on this game. See what uh, see how he closes out the season and uh, how the rest of the team plays. How does this sound for you guys? The Jags win it. Minshew keeps the job. Foles goes to the Colts next season. That's <laughs> interesting. Ooh. I, no, like I think I'm the Jags saying, may have a high price for him, but I think uh, I think they could get a deal done. <laughs> um, I think the Jags absolutely win it. I've I've liked uh, Minshew since last season before he was in the league. Um, we were. Uh, Paying a lot of attention to Wazoo, where he came from. He only played that one season in, in Washington State. Um, but uh, he was great watching watching when he was in Washington State. And yeah. I knew it was going to keep going in the NFL. I just didn't know it was going to happen this soon. So uh, Jacksonville all the way. And Jacksonville's got a lot to work on in the offseason. But if oh, they so keep bad. Minshew around, I think they could possibly get 9, 10 wins next season. What do you think about the Jacksonville? Have you heard the conversation? Part of why Coughlin was let go, the issue, they're going to need to be able to bring guys in and keep them. But some of the conversation that was out there was the fact that they they have issues on the inside in the disciplinary uh, ways they handle things with the guys. And, you know, they, they fired Coughlin, and is that is that just a Band-Aid? Are there issues deeper? Uh, so, none of us have been in the locker room, but so where, I don't where think it's that? I don't think it's sad. I think it was Coughlin. Coughlin is one of those old school uh, like coaches, and Coughlin's gone. They were finding people like Leonard Fournette for sitting on the bench right. when the team oh, yeah. was supposed to be rallying when they were behind or whatever. They were finding guys for the most ridiculous things for no reason. And um, just this is 2019 and not the 70s and 80s in the NFL anymore. <laughs> you can't get away with that kind of stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, Coughlin is a good, good head coach, you know, as well as he did in New York. 
you, you can't take that away from him. But uh, it's 2019, almost 2020 now, guys. Uh, we're moving on from that age. And uh, Coughlin was the problem. 90%, I think it was like 88 or 89% of those fines got brought to the NFLPA. And a lot of them got, you know, brought back to the players. I saw um, that. that they ridiculous fines. Tom Coughlin was the problem. 100%. Yeah, that's... And, and it's a good thing they got rid of them when they did, especially now you can tell they're they're kind of building towards that future. And you can't find a guy for sitting on the bench. You're giving him 25 carries a game. He's getting beat up. You know, he, he wants to say he's a little tired. I don't blame him. You know, it's just... It's, it's little things like that that just kind of led to his demise in Jacksonville. It's, I think he'll get a job somewhere. It may not be in such a, a high role, but he'll be somewhere next year. You think I agree with that. These, you think he'll be around even after all this stuff going on? Yes. I think so. I think for him, you know, yeah, um, like we said, it was he, he's one of those old school coaches. I think this was more of a learning curve for him. He's probably sitting at home going, you know, that's my bad. I probably shouldn't have done that. I know now we're kind of in the the new age of football, and so he's smart enough. He'll change his, you know, his his mindset to how uh, these teams and um, and coaches and players all kind of look at the game. Okay. All right, we got the Cardinals at the Rams, and the Rams have won five straight games against the Cardinals. Both teams are out of the playoffs. So, what do you guys think about this game? Cardinals by two touchdowns. Okay. Uh, anybody know who's going to start at QB for this game yet? Because I don't know. If, if, is it if I was either team, I wouldn't start my quarterbacks for nothing. I'm going to go with the Cardinals either direction personally. But if Kyler Murray plays, then they're going to whoop up on him pretty heavily because I doubt Goff's going to end up playing much. Yeah, I don't think Goff's um, going to touch touch a blade of grass. He shouldn't. Nope. No. Yeah, give me the Cardinals. That's who I'm taking. Yeah, I definitely I think I think Kenyon Drake's going to probably be more heavily relied on. I think you know, yeah, he's he's probably going to be their guy going forward. Sorry, David Johnson, um, but he you, he's shown that he can play. He had a four touchdown game. He had 166 yards last week. Um, yeah, he's, he's shown that he can be that dynamic playmaker that they need in the backfield. Right. Um, so I think they're going to kind of you know just keep him moving a little bit. Um, work in the system, probably, you know, get them more up to speed with, you know, as much of the playbook as they can. And, um, and, and that'll probably be the difference maker for that game. I agree with that. All right, let's move on to the next one. I'm trying to speed it up guys. Sorry about that. Um, yep. Eagles giants. Um, give me the Eagles. I know it doesn't really mean too much in this game, but uh, gosh, man, nothing's looking good in New York. It means a lot. Actually, this game is huge. Um, because, it's a chance for them to spoil a game for a division opponent with their young rookie quarterback and Saquon Barkley. It means something to them. Just, you think is so? Is it going to happen? Not a chance. It is not going to happen. It, there's no way the Giants win this one. But it means something to them. Daniel. It Jones might mean something to the Giants, but it means nothing to the Eagles. It, well, it should because if they lose, it, yeah. then they're out of the playoffs. Do you think so? If, no, is that if, mathematically if, what's yes, going on? No, that's... If, if the oh, Eagles lose, I didn't realize that. Okay. If the Eagles lose the game and the Cowboys win, Dallas is in. I didn't realize that. Okay, yeah. I thought yeah. the Eagles were is, already. My bad. This game is huge. Now, yeah, my is bad. My bad. The Eagles lose this game. Eagles will probably not. I, I would bet money that the Eagles win this game, right? Because they they have they have the finish line in sight, right? They got to get to that finish line. They're going to. But the Giants have a lot to go out there. They have a chance to take the Eagles out of the playoffs. This is big. Yeah, um, I didn't realize that. Fans, yeah, yeah. I should have looked at that one a little bit more. <laughs> it's a weird one. That was... division is such a dumpster fire that only this year's team with this year's division could find a way to have the Cowboys lose to Philly last week and then this week still have a chance to get in. Yeah, that was – yeah, go, go ahead, Jason. Is, for this division, yeah, whoever ends up making it, I don't care if it's Philly, Dallas, doesn't matter, blown out in the first round. But it means something to get in, especially, you know, you get a chance to, to beat a divisional opponent and then be able to still make the playoffs. But it's, guess this. I thought Philly was already in. 
I well, thought was Philly was already in. It's not locked. So if Philly wins, they're in. If, if Philly loses and Dallas wins, they're in. But whoever wins that division plays Seattle at home. So okay. You, it, it's important for you. Who would you ra- – here, you're a Seahawks fan. Who would you rather see Seattle play? Dallas? Philadelphia. You know, I'm with you 100%. Philly, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, I thought I thought I thought Philly was already a lock, so that was that was my bad. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so who are you guys taking in this one? I take Philly. I know it goes against the Cowboy way, unfortunately, but I do think Philly locks it in. Um, it's I, I don't even think it's gonna be close. I think New York plays a little bit, kind of gets Daniel Jones and Saquon some time. They're not even close to competing for anything this year, so they're, they they don't want anything significant to happen to the to the future of their team. Right. They'll play a little bit, and then they'll probably be out sometime in the second half. Right. I'm gonna go with the Giants winning <laughs> in the fourth quarter, pulling off an epic comeback, and putting my Dallas Cowboys in the playoffs. No, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Eagles win this one by 14. Yeah, I think the Eagles got this one on a lock. All right, last game of the week. 49ers in Seattle, and this one got flexed. Huge game. Being a Seahawks fan, I want this to be all Seahawks. I want this to be, you know, the Seahawks' proving point of why they should be as high of a seed as as they were at one point or whatever. But I think um, their injuries have led them to a point where it's just not the season for them. They have too many injuries. We're looking at Marshawn Lynch as a running back. Um, I and again, and I Herman. love Marshawn Lynch, but this is right, this Herman. is we're supposed to be having Chris Carson as our running back, Rashad Penny as the two punch, and gosh, man, Genevion Clowney has been in and out and in and out and in and out. Ziggy Ansah hasn't done anything in a, the entire season. Bobby Wagner's been getting injured, still tag- making tackles all over the place, but getting injured. K.J. Wright's getting injured. The secondary is questionable. Man, the 49ers are healthy where they were not last game. The 49ers are going to win this one in Seattle by two touchdowns. Agreed, 100%. Yeah, I'm with that. You know, uh, San Fran's only a three and a half point favorite, but that they're, they're gonna they're, they're gonna cover that pretty easily. I think George Kittle is gonna be the the slice in that game. George Kittle is going to have like 10, 11 receptions and probably two touchdowns. Yeah, I think the the big factors you're gonna see Kittle, but I think watch out for Emmanuel Sanders as well coming across the middle, and then Nick Bosa will be my MVP of that game. Uh, I think he's going to just, I don't know if it'll get the sacks, but he is going to be in Wilson's face all day long. Yep, I agree with that. All right, guys. Thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, man, I really hope we can do this again. Maybe, <laughs> you know, we you know we got messages. We can do it. It was awesome. I had a good time. Um, Same here, man. Again, yeah, Jason is a me. writer for GCSN. Gavin is another uh, sports podcaster for GCSN Circus Monkey, go check it out. Like <laughs> all of our pages, talking to fan sports, Game Changer Sports Network, Circus Monkey. Uh, we're all awesome, and we all have fun, and uh, we like to have you guys watch us more often. Uh, happy New Year, and uh, happy late Christmas. Thank you guys for joining me. You guys take care. Thanks, 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 thanks man. All right, you guys got anything you want to add? No, just thanks, everybody. Enjoy the football week, man. All right. Yep, it's going to be one great, great weekend for football. All right, you guys take care.